Hello, we're going to be looking at truth tables in this video and talking about how we complete them and looking at three possible exam questions related to truth tables. You should, to be honest, already know what a truth table is to watch this video because you should need to be able to know the truth tables for each of our fundamental Boolean operators. So not and or an XOR. So you may already know what I'm about to tell you. A truth table is a method of representing every possible output based on the inputs to a Boolean expression. It's all about combinations. You want to see in a table format every possible combination. So we understand how our logic circuit, how our Boolean expression is working. And these values can be written in the truth table as either true or false, either written out as words or T or F, or more commonly in binary, one for true, zero for false. So you've looked at hopefully the kind of mini truth tables for and or X or not, but you may be asked to complete a truth table for a expression. So an expression is obviously going to be longer than just one of these operations. It's going to have a couple of operations here. Here we've got and, we've got or, and we've got not. And typically the examiners will give you a empty truth table to complete. The inputs always go on the left hand side and the output always goes on the right hand side. We also here in this particular example have got two extra columns which represent kind of expressions within the expression. These are really there to help you out. So if you're not keeping all the stuff in your head, it, it just sort of builds up your answer bit by bit. We'll use these in a second. So when you are faced with a blank truth table, your first job is to fill out the inputs columns. A, B, and C are my three inputs to this. And we want to express every possible combination of these inputs. So you could do this in a kind of slapdash way and be like, right, let's do one, 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 let's do zero, 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 let's do zero, zero, one, and so on. I kind of just sort of try and cover every combination randomly, but that is not very sensible because you will make mistakes. If you've got three inputs, there need to be eight rows here because two to the power three is eight. With three inputs, I've got eight combinations which is why I should have eight rows here. If it was only two inputs, I'd have only four rows. So the approach I would suggest taking is to count up in binary zero through to seven. If you write the binary numbers zero to seven across each column, this will give you every combination every single time. So what do I mean by that? Well, the first row can be zero, zero, zero. That is zero in binary. Let's now write one in binary, which is zero, zero, one. Let's now write two in binary, which is zero, one, zero. Three is that, four is that, five is this, six is this, and finally seven is three ones. So doing it in a systematic way guarantees you will get every combination represented. This is how mark schemes will be expecting you to do it. You can in theory not do it this way, but it'll be a massive headache for the person marking it. Please, please, please count upwards in binary. Once you have the input sorted, you can start working on the actual outputs. So these two columns are not the outputs, but they're there to help you build up your solution bit by bit. So not C is quite easy. I can just reverse the C column. So zero becomes one, one becomes zero. And then the next column chosen for me to use is B or not C. Well, not C has been done already. So I'm just looking at these two columns here. I'm using or between B and not C. So you can see the benefit of this column is I don't have to then think about Oh, what is the reverse of C? Well, I'm looking for there to be a one in either of these columns. If there's a one in either or both, it's going to be a one. Otherwise, it's going to be a zero. So really, I can look. If I've got two zeros, that's going to be a zero. Otherwise, it's going to be a one. And then Q combines this whole thing. And it doesn't tell us what Q is in the column here. So we've got to look back at our expression. Well, Q is A and B or not C. B or not C is in brackets, so this has been done already. So I'm just anding the A column and this intermediate column here. I'm looking for whether I've got both A and this column here with ones. If both have got ones, it's going to be a one, otherwise it's going to be a zero. So this first one is a zero because A was zero. Here this is definitely zero because both are zero. A is zero on these two, but both are ones in this column and this row, which is great. But here, this column is a zero. Here both are ones and here both are ones. So this would be our answer. Q is only one in three possible combinations. Here is another possible way that a question could involve a truth table. This time around we're sort of being asked to do the opposite. We're given a truth table and being asked to find 
the logic expression which is being represented in this truth table. So I've done the truth table differently because you may see some slight varieties in the exam. This time around I'm using T and F instead of one and zero. And I've also started counting down as opposed to counting up. So this top row is true, 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 which is equivalent of one, 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 which is equivalent to seven. But at the bottom, I've got equivalent of zero, 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 which is equivalent to zero. So it's counting down. There's still a pattern to it. I would always count up if I was you and I'd always do it in binary if I was you, but they may still give you alternative truth tables. Okay, so how do we find the expression based on the inputs A, B, and C? Well, in all honesty, it's a bit of detective work. There isn't a clear methodical, definitely you need to do this approach, but we're looking for patterns in this truth table. So I think the best place to start is looking at the output column. When can we see the output column is true? Well, there are only two cases in this particular truth table where the output is true. And we care about those most. So let's have a look at what is going on in our inputs, which allows the output to be true. So what can we spot in this? We can spot that C is true in both. So C is definitely going to have a big part to play in our expression because C needs to be, it looks like C needs to be true for the whole thing to be true which suggests we've got probably an and C here, but we need to confirm that. But that's my suspicion initially. We then have A and B, and A and B are flipping in these two combinations. So A is true, B is false, then it goes A is false, B is true. So it doesn't matter which one's true, but one of them has to be true. And it looks like both can't be true, but let's confirm that in a second. So my suspicion is we have got well, this pattern here is like XOR. I'm suspecting we've got A, XOR, B, and C. Because of order of operations, we need to make sure uh, we put brackets around this XOR because I'm not doing B and C. There doesn't seem to be any connection between B and C because um, B is changing and C is staying the same. So really the connection is between A and B here, not B and C. Hence, I've put brackets around it. Now that's my suspicion. It's now time to just check I'm right because I may be wrong. We check I'm right by looking at the other situations and seeing if we can disprove what I have said here. Let's see if we can disprove and see, first of all. Potentially this and could be an or. Let's see whether that's possible. Well, I've already in my first row got a C being true and it being false. So therefore that can't be an or because otherwise that would have been true. It looks like and is probably correct. What about XOR? Because it could be or. They behave in very similar ways, of course. Well, or would allow both A and B to be true because true or true is true. However, we can see in that first row that it's still false. So looking at that first row, it does seem to confirm my suspicion. I could probably check some more rows to double check, but that seems to have covered my expression. So your key approach is to look at the true values, but then look at the false ones to see if you can disprove what you are, what patterns you are seeing. Let's look at a third and final possible exam question for truth tables. Here we are given a logic circuit. So we're given the logic gates and we're asked to complete the truth table based on these. So you can see we've got A, B, and C as our inputs. The inputs are always on the left and our output is X in this particular case. I've also got D and E floating in my logic diagram. Again, they put these in to try and help you to give you some intermediate steps so you're not having to jump from your inputs to X via all of these different logic gates. This time around, I've got my inputs put in for me, which will happen sometimes to save you a bit of work. Let's look at the D column first of all. So your first job really before you even do that is to try and recognize what logic gates we have here. This bottom logic gate is an OR gate. This one here is a NOT gate. This is XOR and this is another NOT gate. So D is gonna be B or C. I'm just looking at these two columns and if one of them is one, the whole thing is gonna be one here. So most of these are going to be ones only one is, only two are not. Now E, what is E a product of? We might need to write a little expression here so we don't make a mistake. E is XOR, but XOR what? Well, it's gonna be not A on one side, not A XORed with B or C. We've already done that basically, so B or C is D. So really it's not A X or D. I'm looking at the D column now. I need to, in my head, also do not A. So it's where they haven't maybe given you enough columns here. It would be helpful to have not A done already, but they haven't. 
got to kind of keep that in your head. So I need to concentrate more here myself as well. Now in the A column, we've got kind of two blocks here. We've got a block of zeros and a block of ones. Let's look at these separately just to making things easier. Well, if we're trying to do not A, X or D, what am I looking for across these two columns? Well, I'm looking for A to be zero and D to also be zero, which doesn't sound like XOR, but remember that we're doing not A. So if I say that A is zero, really A is one, and then one XOR zero would give me one. I'm looking for A to be zero, which all of these are, and D to be zero as well, which only happens in this first row. The rest of them, we would have that to be one X or one, which is zero. Look at these bottom set. Well, if these are ones, when I do not, these become zeros. So therefore I'm looking for the D column to be a one. If it's a one, therefore it's gonna be a one overall. That applies in three cases here. And now I've just got to sort of tap in for a result. It's not a very difficult thing to do now. I've just got to do not on the E column to give me X. So I just flip all the values in the E column to give me the value in X. So truth tables are usually not too bad. You've just got to be really, really methodical and really careful. I would suggest that the biggest mistakes happen when people don't do the inputs properly or they rush it. You need to take your time. They are usually a few marks here. You have got time to sit and do it carefully and try and really concentrate. If you view them as being a really easy question, you're more likely to make mistakes, in my opinion.